Hello, in this video we're going to take a look at how to actually control a quadcopter using the transmitter, what, what the sticks do and so on. And I'll also show you a couple of software simulators that you can use to get a feel for what it might be like to control one in real life. The simulators, they, they don't really give you a perfect idea, they always just sort of feel a little bit off. But when you're starting from nothing, I think they're a pretty good thing to try and you can use them when it's raining or when it's dark or even when you don't have any quadcopter at all which is uh, a great way to get started um, you will however only be able to get the best out of them if you have a, a transmitter like this that actually has these nice double joysticks and especially one that doesn't spring back so you're going to want one like that for throttle but both of the simulators that we're going to look at will actually let you use a uh, more typical game controller thing like this. It's just that this has both joysticks that pop back and they don't give you a very good um, resolution of movement, but you can use it. The best way to do it though is with one of these. These usually have a connection here which you can connect up to your computer using a USB adapter thingy which we'll get into a little bit later. So by this point I would imagine that most people watching this video have already figured out what the sticks do and how the control system works but I'll just go over it to make sure that nobody's been left out. Uh, so as I mentioned in one of the earlier videos we have four channels and each stick has two directions of movement so we've got two channels on each stick. And this particular one has the throttle on the left and this is known as a mode 2 layout and it's probably the most common layout and you can also get a mode 1 which is has the throttle on the right um, but this one being the most typical and in my opinion also the easiest to learn I would recommend that you go with this and you'll probably find that if you meet other people they'll be using this system as well so it'll be easier for you to just let them use your quad or they'll give you their transmitter to fly their plane or whatever and it's easy just to sort of be a bit more compatible with other people I think so um, I wouldn't try and force it on you or anything but that's the way I would go so how does a mode 2 transmitter work? The throttle is this obviously and throttle is just going to make the quad go up and down directly like that so when it's at zero you've got the throttle off motors will either not be spinning at all spinning at all or they'll just be spinning at idle depending on what settings you've made in Betaflight uh, and when you put it all the way up like that it's just going to be blasting as full full speed as it can going straight up um, so we need to sort of very 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 carefully manage this and we don't want to have to be fighting a spring like this that's going to be trying to push it into any particular place all the time so that's why there's no spring in this one we just want to just softly move it a little bit at a time to finally position the throttle to where we want it to be. So that's throttle and the other channel that's on this stick is yaw. So the left and right movement if you move this to the left the nose of the quadcopter is going to go around to the left like that. And if I move it just a little bit off center the quad will move slowly, rotate slowly if I push it all the way over it's going to rotate quite quickly like that so in effect this means that the distance of the stick from the center position corresponds to the rate of rotation of the quad so small movement small rate of rotation large movement large rate of rotation uh, so that's a, a rate the stick corresponds to a rate and over here we have pitch and roll on the stick. So you can imagine that if the stick was stuck on top of the quadcopter there and you grabbed hold of the stick and moved it around like that, the quad will just be doing whatever you did with that stick as if you had the stick stuck on there like that. So push it, push it forwards, it'll go forwards, push it back, you know, left and right. So that's why I think this is uh, an easier um, control mode to get the hang of because this stick is... It's literally just like as if you're directly grabbing hold of the quad and rotating it yourself. And if you ever find yourself flying a helicopter, a real helicopter, or a plane that uses a joystick, then this control method would be the same for a, a full-size plane as well.
Now, depending on how you've set things up, the way that the pitch and roll stick moves the quad will either move it in a rate of rotation, as we saw on the yaw, so pushing it a little bit over to the left would make the quad just slowly roll over like that. And if you just held it there like that, and you just kept holding it there, it would eventually go all the way around and come back like that. And it would just keep going around and around and around until you let go of the stick and put it back into the center. So um, obviously you couldn't do that very slowly because when it gets upside down, it's just going to be going down into the ground. So if you want to do that, you've got to do it nice and quick if you want to do like a cool flip. Um, so that's rate mode. And same goes for pitch too. So if you push it forward a bit, it's just going to tip forward like that and keep going around and around and around. Um, and that is a pretty tricky thing to get the hang of when you first start out. So we have another mode which is called angle mode, where instead of corresponding to a rate of rotation, the position of the stick, how far away it is from the center, corresponds to an angle away from level. So when the stick is in the center, that just means it stays level like that. And when you push the stick over a little bit, it tips a little bit and stays there. It doesn't keep rotating around and around. When you push it all the way over, it'll go all the way over to whatever the maximum angle setting is in the flight controller. I think it's 75 degrees or something like that, so it'll be about there. And then when you let the stick go, it will just pop back to level for you. So it's um, a great way to start out, and I still fly like that when I'm flying line of sight as well. Um, I just find it much easier to fly in angle mode. So angle mode and auto level mode are the same thing. And the other mode where we have it so that uh, it corresponds to a rate of rotation like that, that is either called rate mode or acro mode. Uh, and some people also say gyro mode or gyro only mode because that mode doesn't need the accelerometer. Uh, the accelerometer, if you remember, is the sensor that lets the quad know which way is up. And if you're in rate mode, so you go like this and it just keeps turning and turning and turning, it doesn't care which way is up because you have to handle that yourself. So that's why it's called gyro only mode. So it can be a bit confusing to have different words for the same thing, but unfortunately that's just the way it is. And to make matters worse, the term rate is also used to describe another setting, and that is how fast or what rate of rotation the quad will roll at when you put the stick over. So if you have a low rate of rotation, when you put the stick all the way over, it'll just sort of go like that maybe. And if you set that, you can change that in the flight controller setup. If you change it to a higher rate, when you put the stick all the way over, it'll just zip around really fast, faster than I can actually do it with my hands here probably. Um, and that is also called rate, your rate or rates, uh, because you can have rates for pitch, uh, pitch, roll, and yaw. You can set them all up differently to how how quickly you want it to turn around and spin around when you move the stick. Another term you might hear fairly often is expo. Expo is a way of giving you finer, smoother, smaller movements around the center of the stick range while still giving you the full rate of rotation if you push the stick all the way over. Um, so uh, suppose you are flying along and you're heading that way and you're trying to keep it perfectly level, but it's a little bit off level. So you go to straighten it up, and then because the movement, or you you want to have nice fast rates for when you're doing flips and rolls, so it's going to be moving really fast when it goes all the way over, and in order to do that, it has to start moving faster as you move the stick over. So just a small movement to put, to put it to the right might actually take it too far. And then you, so you just bump it a little bit back to the left again, and then it goes too far to the left. So the problem is you don't have a very fine um, precision of control, but Expo will um, make it so that movements that are close to the center will give you just a very small movement, like like that, and you can just finely position it. But when you take it all the way over, you still get the full speed rotation. Um, and the reason it's called Expo is because it's drawn from an exponential graph. So this is a graph going from 0 to 1. So if we can imagine that 0 is when the stick is right in the middle of the range, 
and one is when it's pushed all the way over to the side. Uh, and then this vertical thing here is the output that we get from that. So if it's a straight line, we have no expo. And if we push the stick halfway over here, we'll see that we get out at the other end half. So it's just whatever you put in is whatever you get out. Um, and that is x to the power of 1. And if we increase this to say x to the power of 1.5, uh, we can see that the line starts to become a little bit curved like that so that around the center stick position which is what this zero is as we start moving it over it doesn't climb up as quick as it did before but eventually it will st still go to the same place it'll still go to one um, it's probably more than you needed to know but that's why it's called exponential if you want to try some different settings for rates and expo, you can do that in the Betaflight configurator on the PID tuning page. And the columns to look at are RC rate, super rate. So these will both change the rate of rotation. And then expo is this last column here, RC expo. And we can see a little graph over there, which is sort of giving you a graphical depiction of what that kind of looks like. Um, so that's similar to the graph that we saw just before and if we see I'm not sure what the defaults for these are but if I change that rate to zero and that rate to zero oh sorry expo to zero we'll see that we get a straight line for the red line which is the roll and this is this is what it would be if it was linear and it's showing us that when we push the stick all the way over to the right we're getting 200 degrees per second rate of rotation um, and I've been using this quite a bit higher than that but notice that around the center of the stick it's still fairly low and it starts off quite shallow and then it comes up very sharp at the end so I'm not going to get this 909 degrees per second until I push my stick all the way over and around the middle it's still going to be fairly slow, ro slow to rotate um, what did I have that on? Yeah, I think that's what I had. Um, yeah, so if you want to do quick rotations like flips and rolls and stuff, you're going to have to increase. Um, probably this is the most sensible column to use. You're going to have to increase this quite a bit because if this is too slow, you'll just do a very slow turn upside down and you might not have time to get all the way around before you crash. So. <laughs> This is uh, going to need to be raised if you want to do flips and rolls. So here's the first of the simulators. This is one that I made specifically for this video series. And it's only a 2D simulation, but I think this is actually quite good because it lets us focus on one channel at a time. And specifically, throttle is what you're going to really find quite difficult, I think, when you first start out. So I wanted to try and isolate the throttle so that you could work on that separately and then work also on uh, sideways movements separately and then bring them together when your brain has sort of got each one worked out and then try and do them together. So I'll just start off using the keyboard, although this is going to be pretty terrible. We'll just give it a, give it a try. Uh, so we have some instructions up here. Proceed to change control device, currently using keyboard. W to apply throttle. So when I push W, it's going to do that. So that's our little quadcopter there. Uh, and B to change the battery. So I've just simulated how much power you get from a two cell or a three cell or a four cell battery. So if I use a four cell battery, I get a lot quicker acceleration like that. Uh, this is just sort of roughly what I thought felt about right. Uh, the source code for this is on GitHub, by the way, if people want to play around with it some more. Um, but anyway, you can see that keyboard is pretty ter terrible control because it's either off or on and off or on in this case meaning the throttle so these little squares here are symbolizing the position of the joysticks on the transmitter and in this particular scenario only the left one is enabled so that's why it's in bright green and when I push W the throttle goes from zero throttle to full throttle and then back down to zero immediately so we we have pretty terrible control. However, if we do a bit of PWM <laughs> style controlling with our keyboard, we can actually get it to hover kind of at one height. 
Um, so this blue square is a goal position. So you, the idea is that you'll hover your quadcopter inside this blue square, and there's a little green bar that grows at the top of it. And if you keep it inside the blue square for three seconds, I think, then the the green bar will fill up, and then the blue square will move somewhere else. So this is just sort of giving you something to aim for instead of just randomly flying around. Uh, anyway, so that is this scenario, which is throttle. So this is just to let you work on your throttle control without having to worry about any of the other inputs. And let me just move this over a little bit. Um, so we have a couple of other, we have quite a few other things here, but let's just look at lateral. And that. So now the computer is controlling the throttle, which is why this side is now darkened. And this side, which is our pitch and roll, is enabled. And we can do, we can press A and D to rotate left and right like this. But again, it's um, it's just going to go all the way over and then back to the middle and all the way over again. So we still don't have very good control, but this will get you used to the the way the quadcopter moves. It doesn't stop very well on its own. So if I turn to the right a bit and then let go, it's just going to keep going. That's just the way it works. So if you want it to stop, you're going to have to get the hang of counter thrusting if you like what's a good word for that counter thrusting I suppose counter rotating in the opposite direction to make it stop and again we have this blue square which we can put it in like that actually this is fairly easy to do with the keyboard and you can see that the the throttle is actually moving we can see the throttle stick moving this is the computer is doing that for you but the reason it needs to do that for you is because when you tip to the side, because your thrust is no longer pointing straight down, you lose some vertical thrust, so the throttle needs to be increased. So that's that's one of the tricky things that you'll need to come to terms with in the next scenario, which is throttle and lateral. And this is where we start to get into the realm of being pretty near impossible to do with the keyboard because... I need to have some throttle on in order to have control. So if I turn, if I let go of the throttle, it just sort of does, <laughs> just sort of rotates freely in whatever the last thing it was doing. Now I've got it stuck upside down. So you can press R to reset it. And I don't think I'm even really going to try doing with this, this with the keyboard. Oh, there we go. Oh, oh, I got it. No, I didn't get it. Okay. But uh, you can see that that is pretty difficult. So let me plug in my USB controller and see how that works. All right, I'll start off with the Xbox 360 controller. Um, by the way, there was another option that showed up when we entered this throttle and lateral scenario. We can now press M to change the control mode between angle mode, auto level, and um, rate mode otherwise known as acro gyro um, and keep it on angle mode to start with um, it's probably the much easier way to do it anyway so now I can press C to change the control device and that will say currently using gamepad trainer port um, and when we are using a joystick input like this it will also uh, show us press G or T to change the expo value and G will decrease the expo, T will increase the expo, that's what those two button press uh, thingies mean. Um, so it's not going to work at the moment because I haven't set it up, it doesn't know how far the sticks should be moved over to indicate a full movement and so on. So what I'm going to have to do is come down to calibration and this will probably tell you no device found um, and you'll need to start the program again. So let me just do that. This is just because it only detects it when the program starts up. So let me do this again. Hold on a second. Uh, okay, calibration. Now this time, if you start the program up after you've plugged your USB device in, you should see something like this. And when we move 
our sticks, analog sticks, we should see, this one is the D-pad, yeah, that's right. Yeah, so we should see four channels moving when we move these analog sticks. And the way that we set these up, we need to map them to throttle and roll. So this little red circle here, we can move this around like a plug. Um, imagine you're connecting connecting wires together in a circuit. So whichever one we want to be the throttle, we're going to plug it onto there. And plugging just means to put it on so that it's touching one of these ones. So I want this one to be my throttle, which is actually channel 2 on this controller. So I'm going to put that there. And now I can see that when I move when I move up, it's going down. So I actually want to reverse this one. So I'm going to put this at the top like that. So that now, when I move my throttle stick, or what I want to be my throttle stick, the throttle is moving to, to the top. And now I can get some halfway positions instead of just using the keyboard to turn it fully on or fully off. Um, and if I move this stick all the way down now, we'll see that it calibrates itself to that full range. So now when I let the stick go, it's gone to the middle position. And when it all the way down is all the way down, all the way up is all the way up. When I let it go, it's in the middle. Now that's not really what I wanted for my throttle. I wanted it, a little, it's a little bit more convenient that if I let the throttle go, it will go to zero. So to reset that, I just plug it in again. I just removed it and plugged it in and then I just moved the stick within that range that I want to use so I'm just going to put it all the way up and then I'm just going to let it go so you can see that now I've got that range for this stick and I don't want to use the bottom half of that stick so hopefully that makes sense anyway for roll looks like we've got this one channel 3 and this one I do want to use the full range so I'm going to push it both ways to calibrate it so that it knows that that's the range that I want to use. Uh, and then we are done, but we also need to press S to save the settings. So I'll press S. Now, let's go back to the throttle situation, and I should be able to... Oh, I'm still using the keyboard, hold on. Press C to change the device. Okay, now... Now we're talking, I can hover in a much more sane way. And I can use my throttle to position myself very nicely in there. Like that. And for the lateral situation, I have a little bit smoother control for this too. Like that. Oops. Uh, yeah, so if you have a, a gamepad around, you could try this pretty easily. Um, the next one you might find a little bit tricky. This, it's still going to be possible with the gamepad. It's a lot better than using keyboard. But it's still not as easy as using the actual RC transmitter, which I will do in a second. This is the USB dongle that I'm using to take the signal from the trainer port of the transmitter to the computer. And it's a bit of a cheapy one, but it seems to be working okay. And you can switch to different options for different flight simulator programs, I think. Um, but with the calibration thingy that I just showed you, you should be able to just pick any one of these and have, well, you can set up whichever channels you want to use and which direction they should be in. So it shouldn't matter which one you choose here. But I'm going with number one, which seems to work fairly well. Okay, now let's try the real deal. So again, if you plug a new USB device in, you'll need to restart the program so that it detects it properly. Um, it's probably not going to work. Oh, I'm using the keyboard still. Hold on. No, it's probably not going to work with the same calibration, so I'll need to calibrate this one again. Oh, it's not working at all. Ah. You also need to turn it on. <laughs> Let's try that. There we go. Now, we, now we've got something lovely. Uh, so let me just take these off. And that one is this one. 
this time I can do it the full range and this one is that one so that is correct and then S to save now uh, this feels a bit gutless because it's 2S so let me change to um, four cell battery this is the way to go <laughs> so now now I have about as good control of this as I would over a, a real quadcopter so I can go pretty much directly where I wanted to go and hover there and stop under quite good control and you can see that I'm only making very very small movements with my fingers and you may be thinking, wow, is that all it takes to fly? And the answer is, yeah, typically you've, you're not really moving your fingers much at all in most cases. This is, um, maybe you need to move your fingers a little bit more than this, but this feels to me about right. Um, look in the comments on this video for other people who have tried it. They may think that this is wrong or whatever, but I hazard, to, hazard a guess and say, it feels about right for most people. Anyway, you get the idea. So we just move backwards and forwards to these goal points. And this will let you focus on just two dimensions really. We don't have we don't have pitch involved and we don't have yaw. But this is very important to get these there's two important things. One is just the throttle, because it doesn't behave like you're probably used to from games. I hear I've heard people say before they started flying quadcopters, they said, "Oh, I play a lot of video games, so you know it'll it'll be easy. I'll just get used to it." But the way the throttle works is not really like anything you've encountered in video games. I would I would think it's because um, you're controlling the acceleration of the craft. You're not controlling the velocity or the position. So it's um, it's not that easy, and you will. If you just go out with a real quadcopter and start doing this, you'll be quite frustrated, I think. So having the ability to use something like this where you can isolate just the throttle will be really quite helpful. And so that's one thing, the throttle. And then the other thing is that um, you need to get used to adding throttle when you move sideways. So if I just put this in a hover here, and now if I just hit roll, it just dumps me straight down to the ground because I didn't add any throttle as well. So you need to get used to... I'm going to go to the left now, but I'm going to keep it level. But I have to add... oops, throttle, too much. But I have to add a bit of throttle to keep it level. Like this. So, yeah, practice doing this. Don't worry about the blue box too much. Just sort of fly it around however you feel like. Or maybe if we get that blue box in the middle, we can fly around it. Well, that took a while. <laughs> it's uh, The position of the blue box is just random, so it, I was just waiting for it to show up in the middle. Uh, but this is another thing you might like to try. Just try and fly around and around the blue box in a controlled circle not not moving too wildly and then also go the other way as well perhaps uh, yeah just sort of I don't know make up a little task for yourself to try and do whatever feels like a suitable skill level for you and give it a try and the other simulator that I'm going to look at in this video is called FPV Freerider this is quite cheap I think it's free for one or two of these scenarios and then if you pay five dollars or ten dollars wasn't too much uh, you can get all six of these places and I kinda like this one because it runs on Windows Mac and Linux so I can run it on my Linux computer um, my simulator that we just looked at before by the way will also run on Windows Mac and Linux and I did actually test it on all of them with both of those controllers so should be good to go um, and this one, the FPV Freerider will let you try line of sight flying and of course FPV flying as well. So it's quite good for getting the hang of both of those, or at least 
getting a taste of what it might be like. Uh, to set this up, we need to do the same kind of calibration procedure. So you'll want to set this to USB controller and then click on calibrate controller. Uh, so move my throttle stick. I can. S no, wait a minute. What do I do? Oh, center all sticks. Okay. Center all sticks, then click OK. Uh, and it says hold your left hand stick. So it's presuming that we're using mode 2 and that the left hand stick is going to be your. So if I move my your stick, we'll see that the little thingy here is moving. Um, but it doesn't go white. It's a, it's a bit crappy, to be honest, this whole calibration procedure. But what I've discovered is that if I move it all the way to the right, it'll go white. See how it changed to white a little bit? I don't see why they couldn't have made it go from red to green or something a little bit easier to see, but it's just faintly going from gray to white. And if you don't make it go white at some point in this range, it's not going to detect it. So move it to, move the your stick to wherever it makes it go white and then click OK. And then you should see your on here. Um, okay, next one, throttle. So hold your left hand stick, presumably throttle. Now this one's going to go white and I can click OK. Roll left. Well, this didn't go white. And pitch up. Done. And now we can check this here to see that we've got everything right. And fortunately, it looks like everything is. Oh no, my yaw is backwards. So I can click invert to get my yaw going the right way. Throttle is good. Everything looks good. And you can insert some trims here as well if you want to make it if it wasn't right in the middle you can uh, set it to be right in the middle but mine looks pretty good uh, and then I just click on OK so let's go to this one and you can change between acro mode or rate mode and self leveling auto leveling there and if you click on camera you can change between FPV view and um, line of sight view. So we'll just do a little bit of flying to give you the idea of what this is like. And I can't fly in rate mode in line of sight very well, so I'm just turning auto level on at the moment. But this will give you a feel for how the controls move, and it feels feels to me a bit sluggish, um, especially with my more powerful quadcopter. It flies a lot more snappy than this. But still, this this is good for letting you get the hang of it without any risk. Like you're not going to break anything. Like if I did, if I do that, like a total time that it's only cost me about two seconds and it didn't cost me any money. Um, whereas in real life, that could ruin your day or it could be the end of your flight for that day if you break something and you have to go home and fix it. Oh, and you're not going to drive into your face and hurt yourself either like that. But anyway, this all. This will get you used to flying line of sight. And then you can... Probably what most people want to do is fly FPV. Um, for me now, I'm going to turn acro mode on to do this. And this is... Yeah, this is what it's really all about. So if you have never done any line of sight flying you might want to give that a try but otherwise probably just skip straight to FPV and get the hang of this and I've got to admit it's not as easy as in real life at least for me right now I, I probably need to spend quite a bit of time getting used to this because the thing about flying these things is you really sort of get used to one particular quadcopter I find like I found I didn't really get good at flying FPV until I just built one quadcopter style and made some settings that I liked and then just stuck with it for months and then I got really quite quite good at flying that one. And I think that's what a lot of the pros do too, people like Mr. Steel and um, Final Glide and all that, they just have one quadcopter build that they stick with all the time. Anyway, I'm getting a little bit off topic, but um, the point is that I don't feel very confident with this. I feel a lot more confident with my actual quadcopter. Oops. But anyway, um, 
spend some time with this and if you are on Windows you'll be able to play a few of the other simulators Ooh, that was lucky uh, there's a couple of other ones that are admittedly quite a bit better than this one I don't recall the names of them hot props I think one of them was uh, and there's another one which I'll see if I can put an annotation on the screen here when I edit the video um, but yeah now I'm just rambling so get hold of one of these this one is free to try at least for one of these scenarios and uh, I think this one might be free as well not sure but um, what else to say not much really <laughs> okay I think it's the end of this video isn't it so <laughs> hope that was useful thanks for watching see you next time